Welcome back everyone to another amazing session on complete DSA placement series with C++. Yes, this is going to be an amazing session as we are going to discuss some problems on Code Studio platform. So, what are we waiting for? Let's begin with the lecture right away. So this is the first question. Do you remember this question? Yes, exactly. It was homework question from the last session. So if you haven't done the question, then pause this video and do it right now. So what does the question say? It says to find out square root of a number. And uh, over here, if the number is not a perfect square, then we need to return floor of that square root. So suppose, let me move to my board and suppose we have 10 and we know that 10 is not a perfect square, okay, but 10's square root is 3 point something something. So over here we need to return 3. So uh, let us think of a solution, okay. Let us have 10, okay, and let us try to have all the squares one by one. So what is one's square? One's square is one. What is two's square? It is four. What is three's square? It is nine. What is four's square? It is sixteen. And now we know that this ten is somewhere between nine and sixteen, right? As it is somewhere between 9 and 16, as 10 is somewhere between 9 and 16, then the square root of 10, square root of 10 will be somewhere between 3 and 4. And if the square root is somewhere between 3 and 4, then the answer should be 3. Right, we know this, okay, we actually know this. So, what we are going to do? Over here, what we can do is, we can run a loop. We can just run a for loop or a while loop, okay. By and initialize integer to 1, in, initialize i to 1, okay. I'll check for the condition later on, first of all will just increase the value. This is our follow and what we want to check. We can check that if i is a square, if i is a square is less than or equal to the number n. If it increases, okay, whenever it increases, it will stop, okay. So, whenever it goes to 4, 4 square is 16 and it will stop. Okay, over there itself it will stop. And as it has stopped over here, the answer will be 4 minus 1, that is 3. Right. So, over here we can just return i minus 1. And a small, there is a small little mistake over here. Just pause the video and think what mistake I have done. Okay, if you have found out then very good. If you haven't then let me tell you that I don't uh, have to declare I over here but I need to declare I over here. Okay, otherwise I's value will be deleted when the for loop ends. So declare the value of i over here but initialize inside the for loop. So first of all we need to initialize it. Then we need to check. Okay, we need to keep checking if i square is less than n. What about 16? Okay, if it is equal, if we have to find square root of 16. If it is a perfect square, let us say 16. Then first of all it will check 1's square is 1. 2's square is 4, then it will move 3's square 9, then it will move plus plus 4's square 16, okay. It will move because the condition is to 5's square 25, oops, it is greater than 16. So it will stop over here. It will stop at 5 and will return 
5 minus 1 that is 4. So it will work for the numbers which are perfect squares and the numbers which are not perfect squares. So let us code it in the code studio. Let us move to code studio and you must be wondering that we haven't written anything inside for loop right because all the condition inside the for loop are enough to write our solution and this is our solution int sorry not int just i equal to 1 i star i i star i is that i square i square is less than equal to n i plus plus and at last we'll return i minus 1 so yes this is our code very short code right i have five liner code very cute let us run it and let us check if the tests pass wow all the 15 test cases have passed now let us submit the code and let us check superb we have 30 cases passed okay so yes we have done our first question let us move to the next question that is terms of ap you can pause the video and read the problem statement right over here i hope you have paused the video so let's see what it says we have been given a number x and uh, we have been told to find first x terms in this series 3 into n minus 3 into n plus 2 okay which are not multiples of 4 so if it is multiple of 4 then we need to ignore it otherwise we need to add that term okay so we need to find out find it as he has as he has not been able to answer so over here if x is equal to 4 then first one okay let us move to our board and let us see over here itself so when x is equal to 4 the first term will be 3 into 1 plus 2 okay n will start from 1 so 3 into 1 plus 2 is 5 now the second term will be 3 into 2 plus 2 but as it is 8 we need to ignore it next term will be 3 into 3 plus 3 so it's 9 10 uh, 3 3s are 9 10 11 12 okay we actually need to ignore it whoops sorry it's not 3 into 3 plus 3 actually it's 3 into 3 plus 2 so it's 11 and we don't need to ignore this term okay 3 into 3 plus 2 11 then we have 3 into 4 plus 3 3 into 4 plus 2 not 3 2 actually so it's 4 into 3 12 and plus 2 we have 14 then it is 3 into 5 plus 2 so 5 into 3 is 15 and 15 plus 2 is 16 and 17 okay so you see we need to have first four term so this is the first term this is the second term this is the third term and this is the fourth term we need to ignore this particular term so how are we going to do it we need to return it in the form of vector so what can be done is we can just check for the length of the vector if the length of the vector is equal whenever the length of vector equals the x the term the number of terms then we need to stop it okay so whenever we'll write whenever vector dot size okay length of that vector 
can be found out using the size function. Whenever vector dot size uh, equals x, we need to stop it. Okay. So, what should be the condition actually? Vector dot size less than x, right? Because it should always be less than x. So, that at that point of time only we need to add. Otherwise, we need to stop it. So, it should not be less than equal to but less than x. So, vector size over here should be less than x. And we will just run from 1 till uh, the loop doesn't stop. Okay. So, over here we only have the starting parameter from where we will run and the stopping condition is this not uh, i equal to less than or equal to n but this will be our stopping condition and how are we going to update our number so for updating our number we'll have i plus plus okay so let us let us see we'll have a for loop for int i equal to 1 then we will have vector okay vector dot size this will be the condition size less than less than n and then we will just add it over here we can have if condition okay and if it is not if number mod 4 is not equal to 0 then only we need to add it and so on and then we can just close the loop so this is how we are going to do it let us move to code studio and practice it actually so over here in the code studio First of all, we need to have a vector. So, vector, vector int answer. Then we will have a loop. Okay. For int i equal to 1, i, no, not i less than equal to x, but vector dot size vector dot size less than x okay you see the condition for loop is a bit different over here than the general for loop that we apply in all the questions because we don't have any condition of i but we have a condition of vector vector it should be s i z e size less than x and over here we'll have an if condition so but before if condition, let us have int number, int num equal to 3 into i plus 2. And then we will have if condition, if number uh, mod mod 4 is not equal to 0. Then only we need to push it to answer answer dot push underscore back and number. So, we have pushed it to the answer and then at last we will return answer. So, this is our code checking for any errors. I think we don't have any of them. So, let us run our code. Okay, a compilation error over here. Oops, we don't have vector dot size actually we have answer dot size so all the test cases have been passed now let us submit our code and check for all of the test cases yes whippy they are accepted okay great so we have done one more question in our coding platform now let us move to another question of counting our words okay so, this is our question. Okay, over here to the problem. I am, you can pause the video 
and just read the problem. I hope you have paused the video. Now let us see what the problem says. So we have a string and we need to find total number of words present in it. Okay. It is assumed that two words will have only a single space in between. Also, there wouldn't be any leading or trailing spaces in the given input string. Okay. So, we have been given a very easy question. It's, it's really easy. Okay. Easiest question of all. Over here, there are words. Okay. There are some words that are separated by spaces and two words will have only one single space okay so if there is a way okay to iterate over all the each and every character then we can count number of spaces okay so if we have three spaces then number of words will be equal to spaces plus one okay spaces plus one and that's it we have found our solution so over here we need to count number of spaces how are we going to do it we can just initialize a count variable first of all so count is equal to zero then we can run our loop from from 1 till n actually from 0 till n because all the things all the uh, values or we can say all the positions in a string or an array start from 0 and not 1 so from 0 till the length length of string minus 1 okay length of string minus one by the it would be length of string minus one because it is starting from zero and not one so from zero to length of string minus one if any character is equal to space then we will do count plus plus so what will count store will it store number of spaces or number of words just pause the video and think and write down in the comment section below yes it will store number of spaces so as number of spaces are count times okay we have count number of spaces number of words will be count plus one and we are going to return count plus one so yes pretty easy question let us do it in our coding studio okay so over here we need to write uh, our code first of all we'll initialize count to zero now we will run a loop for int i equal to zero and let me just write i plus plus now to find out length of the string we use size function as we had used in the previous question so input size and what should be less than or greater than input child actually i should be less than input size so i less than input size let me just remove all the spaces over here now we will just check if if a character at position i so input input in input string we want a character at ith position okay so this is how we denote if we want to get a character or any element at ith position in a string or an array we give it in this manner in this box bracket so character at ith position if it is equal to equal to one single space okay remember to give it in single quotations otherwise it if we give it in double quotations then some compilers treat as treat it as a string and all the things that are given in single quotations are treated as characters 
so we have written our character okay input dot i equals equals space then we will just increase the value of count at last we are going to return count plus one so yes this is our code let us run our code and check if it works okay all the test cases have passed now let us submit our code and check if all the test cases pass yippee we have done this problem finally so we have done three questions on code studio in this session now it's the turn for homework question so this is the homework question you need to find the sum of all even digits and odd digits in a number and then return it okay then print it actually and you need to give a space between the sum of even digits as well as odd digits so this is the question do it in homework and come back in the next lecture we'll meet in the next lecture till then keep learning and keep growing so bye bye everyone